What's going on guys? I wanted to do a quick video today on using a bore gauge. This one has a one-tenth resolution which is going to get you extremely close for not a huge investment. That's what makes these really shine. There's pistol grip style three-point mics and different things like that where you can get really good accuracy in a short amount of time but they cover such a limited range. A kit like this is a good investment if you're looking to get into doing a little bit more precision type work. So to start off you have your actual indicator portion up here which you can loosen and tighten this collar and the actual indicator itself will go in and out. I have this set for the demonstration so I'm not going to move that. And then what's a little bit different here you have a spring-loaded housing here and then you have a little plunger inside and as you depress that plunger see if I can get them both on the same portion here as I'm depressing that plunger you see we're getting movement in the needle pushing the needle in the plunger is going to give you a smaller reading so you see we're actually going up on the dial that's something to remember but then you have the portion up here this knurled, knurled portion here as you loosen this you have these little stems that go inside and on this set they're actually carbide tipped but what you do is you have a reference guide here and the actual part that I'm measuring right now my target is 1.7767 so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look here for the size that I want you see it's starting here at 0.7 this covers a range from 0.7 up to 6 inch this actual kit does so I'm gonna find my number 1.7767 what's the biggest range that swings through there it looks like I can go from 1.748 to 1.795 by using number 511-732 as you can see here 511-732 this is going to cover a range from 1.4 to 2.5 inches so keeping that in mind what does it say we need here 1.748 there's nothing in this field over here what this field here is are these little bitty washers so when you open your kit up, this is the kit over here for this particular one. You see we have different um, actual mics here, the actual telescoping portion. That covers two to six. But then you take that number, 732, and you have washers here that actually go inside of that portion. And different washers underneath this little captive nut in front of well behind this plunger up against the shoulder are going to determine the range so for what I'm trying to measure here they say that I need to have no washers and the number three stylus here so that's what I've selected right number three I'm going to be cover, cover, cover that range with no washers and I'll just show you what the uh, washers look like when you put them in there let me set this down without doing any damage. You do not want to lose any pieces. That's one of the only drawbacks of these. It's a lot of parts. Put this guy back in here. Let's open it up. And let's just say that that reference guide had called for a .12 washer. I would remove this. And I would slip the washer on the backside portion here see and then as I tighten this down we would be covering a different size range and you can actually stack several of them together if it calls for that but mine calls for none with the measuring range that I'm gonna be doing so I'm gonna remove that and put it back don't lose these kits not ruined if you lose one but you're gonna need to replace it so I'm putting that back together and a really simple way to set these if you don't have a full set of gauge blocks I'm not going to go through 
gauge blocks and stacking up a set of those, what you can actually do is take something that almost everybody has, right? If you're starting to get into precision measuring and take your micrometer and set your reference. If your micrometer is reading on size, gonna keep rotating this in. I'm not pulling on it at all. I'm letting the uh, ratcheting mechanism do its thing. Lock that in. Take a look. And we're extremely close. Looks like we're within a tenth of being right on two inches. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna loosen that up. Now that we've verified that our micrometer is reading correctly, is I am going to set it to my target number. So I have predetermined that I want to turn to 1.7767. So I'm going to go down here to 1.8 and we have 25 thousandths graduations, right? So we're going to go down to 1.775 and then I'm going to come up one and seven tenths. So it's a little bit hard to do here on the camera. Hang on a second, 77576. We'll go about most of the way up, take a peek here. This is actually how you read a micrometer as well. I don't know if you guys can see that. When the seven, come on, focus. You see how the seven is lining up there? I can get that a little bit better. When this tick mark is on seven, we're at seven tenths. All you're doing when you're reading this around the barrel here is you're looking for the set of lines that most closely align and when you know that you're over halfway to the next number which is three that's a pretty good indicator that yes it is in fact seven tenths so we're looking at 1.775 oh i went to the wrong number we're supposed to be on six that's why you always double check Trying to look at this through the camera and do it at the same time. So that's, here's 75, 76, and 7 tenths. Now, always, always, always double check yourself. I'm going to actually measure between here with the caliper to tell me that I'm in the ballpark. So this caliper has been set, and I trust it, to tell me that I'm at least in the ballpark. I know I'm on the right number. But just for sanity check, you always want to do that. So then all this tool really is, is a reference. What you're going to do is with this style here, this is kind of a three point contact system where this edge, this edge, and the, style, and the plunger will actually orient themselves. When you have this oriented correctly in your bore, they're going to pivot themselves to where when you find your lowest number you see I'm moving this around inside of the micrometer like this until I get my smallest reading you see if I push down on the plunger further that's a smaller reading. You see we're going around clockwise here. So when I find that smallest reading, that's actually going to be my zero reference. You see, it's very difficult to do on camera here, but you see we're going a little bit past that zero, which means that my reference after removing and demonstrating those washers for you guys is changed ever so slightly from where I calibrated this before we were on camera. I'm going to say that's really close. So then all we're doing, if I know that I've set my micrometer to 1.7767 and I've now zeroed this, make sure that you're looking at your portion up here that the numbers match. I'll show you that one more time. We're pivoting in. Careful. Everything is carbide tip, but you can hurt it. You see, we're actually on 
the three around that clock, if you look real close there, we're on 0.03. So using that as a reference, when you sweep your bore, let's grab a piece here. You can see the normal difference. All you're doing is you're comparing. I'm gonna look inside this bore here, pivot it in, and I might have to lay this on its side. So, like I said, I'm a little bit out of calibration because I removed that nut to show you guys the washers, but my bore, according to this, is within two tenths I'm seeing here. All we're doing is we're sweeping, we're trying to get a smaller number. As I pull against the wall, you see the needle going around clockwise? That tells me that that's a smaller number. So I'm actually under my target by a tenth or two here on the, exactly where I'm measuring. That can change as we go further in the bore, which it almost definitely will, because I know I was cutting a little bit of taper. You see, I'm a little bit more undersized the deeper I got. I hope that helps and I hope I said everything correctly because shooting a video of this length I'm not quite used to. We've been posting on Instagram a while for a while but those are about one minute videos. Thanks.